A great bounce back win for the Steers and another shutout for the defense. Hello, everybody. Terry Bennett here on the Graham Steer Football Show, brought to you by the Graham Athletic Booster Club, right here on S2S Sports, part of L4 Media. As Ty Thompson threw for 201 yards and two touchdowns, he also had 34 yards on the ground and another touchdown. Uh, in fact, the running game looked really solid for Graham as he had success. Isaiah Flores had a touchdown and near 100 yards. Jace Gill had a touchdown and over 50 yards. And this was the best that the, the rush running attack has looked so far this year. And and we know why with injuries and being banged up and all and stuff. Uh, Harrison Brockway, uh, receiver, three catches, 135 yards and two touchdowns. That's just crazy stats right there. Uh, as Graham improves to two and one, they bounce back from that tough loss against Springtown, 35 to 21, and got another tough one this week in Decatur. This is going to be a really good test again uh, for this Graham team. Decatur, I know they don't have Nate Palmer, the, the all everything running back. And I know that, you know, they lost some other key guys and they've started slow for them at one and two. I say slow for them. This is kind of what Decatur does. They play such a tough non district schedule. And then last couple of years, they were in such a tough district, you know, that they would come out of regular season with four losses. And, and then, boom, next thing you know, they're playing in a state semifinal like they did last year like they did the year before. Uh, I, I don't know if they're going to make it that far this year, but it wouldn't shock me. It wouldn't shock me at all. And, you know, it, it took Anna everything they could to beat Decatur last year in that uh, state semifinal game. Uh, but for this one, for Graham, I you know, I think this is a one-possession game. It's going to be a good test, and hopefully Graham can continue the offensive success that they did last week against Whitesboro. As always, we're going to be talking to the head coach of the Graham Steers, Coach Clay McChristian, and we'll do that when we come back right here on the Graham Football Show on S2S Sports, part of L4 Media. I want to remind everybody, in case you do not know, uh, L4 Media, we're not just doing this coaching show. We also uh, shoot video and pictures at every Graham game. Uh, Taylor Lee, Tish Lee, and the crew do wonderful jobs. They do a football hype videos. Of course, they're the ones Taylor did a wonderful job with the Graham intro video that you see on the scoreboard every game uh, at home. Uh, and, and so we have pictures, we have videos. So check us out l 4 mediacompanycom or YouTube at L4 media company. So if you go to YouTube, either just search L4 media company or type in the URL, youtube.com forward slash the at symbol, L4 Media Company, and you'll see the highlight videos. You'll see hype videos, all for Graham, and, of course, other ones we cover, too. But I did want to make sure some of you knew that because I don't think some people have because I actually had somebody email me asking if we knew who was taking the videos, and I was like, yeah, that's us. Uh, so please check that out. Again, L4 Media Company or our YouTube channel at L4 Media Company. Do you have a kid that plays sports? Are you yourself a weekend warrior? Then I'm going to tell you something. Check out NeuroGuardPlus.com. That's N-E-U-R-O GuardPlus.com. It's a mouthpiece that can not only help with concussions, but can dramatically affect the way you perform. And the mission of NeuroGuard is to, of course, reduce the risk of suffering a concussion when participating in any contact sport, military, anything that you're doing physical that you could take a blow to the head, you might want to put in a NeuroGuard mouth guard. And as I said, it not only helps eliminate concussions, it helps you perform better by simply aligning your jaw properly. And that sounds like such a simple thing, but it is so important because it allows oxygen to get to your brain. And when you get oxygen to the brain, you don't have that fog of sports or that fog of war where you get confused. And if you've ever played football, you know that's a sport where that can happen. Especially, man, you're in there on the trenches and, and you take a shot to the side and, and all of a sudden things are spinning. This mouth guard will help you keep focus by, again, simply keeping oxygen going to your brain 100%. Again, check them out, neuroguardplus.com. And if you play sports, if you have a kid that plays sport, if you do something physical, uh, one of the things that Dr. Hutchinson, the creator of this, was talking about was uh, some people will use it when they're doing yard work and when they're mowing and things like that where they're being physically active because they know it helps align their jaw and it keeps oxygen going to the brain, which also helps your lungs, by the way, when you can have full breath every time as you're performing. So, again, Check them out, neuroguardplus.com.
Hi, I'm Josh Bell with the Miami Marlins. I wear NeuroGuard to help with strength and coordination when I'm in the weight room and help with balance when I'm on the baseball. Terry Bennett back here on the Graham Football Show, brought to you by the Graham Athletic Booster Club. Now joined by the head coach of the Steers, Coach Clay McChristian. And Coach, these shows are way easier when you win like you did last week. You beat Whitesboro 58 to nothing. A good bounce back win for the guys. It is. You know, I say we told the team on Saturday, I said, you know, the sun always shines a little bit brighter after a win. And so it definitely did that. It was it's always good to get back in the, the win category and, uh, you know, came out of it relatively healthy. So that was good and, and looked better in a lot of areas. So it was a good night for us all the way around. Yeah. Your run game. Uh, it wasn't one guy. It was multiple guys. Of course, Ty Thompson, he had a touchdown on the ground, but Isaiah Flores had 93 yards and a touchdown. Jay skill at 62 yards and a touchdown. It had to feel good with some of the issues y'all have had with injuries and such to have your ground game finally kind of start producing. It is, you know, everything revolves around your ground game. And I was really proud of our offensive staff of, uh, you know, using a lot of our different uh, playmakers and started putting some of those other guys in the backfield. We are doing lots of shifting and motioning and, and getting different guys in the backfield and giving them looks. And uh, they all kind of excelled at it. You know, it kind of started up front, though. You know, I thought our old line is really kind of starting to mesh a little bit now, and they're starting to look good, uh, open up some holes. And then, you know, we've got several guys who can get back there in the backfield and, and make some things happen. So I thought that was it was a really good night for us offensively. And we don't want to take away from Harrison Brockway, three catches, 135 yards, two, DD, two TDs. And, again, the run game kind of helped release some of the pressure on Ty Thompson at quarterback. He had his best game of, of the season so far as well. He did. They both those kids did a great night. You know, one other thing that I'm not sure to show up the stat line, but Harrison Brockway also had a – I think it was a 60-yard punt return mm-hmm. uh, for a touchdown. And so, man, he had a great all-around night. It was good to just see him going. You know, he and Ty just have a really good connection. They've had it you know, for, th- for three years now. So it was good to see them uh, connect a few times. And you know, Ty ended up being 8 of 11, which you think, well, it's not a lot. But, man, of those three passes, I think all three of those were dropped. So he put the ball on the money uh, really well to all, all 11 of the passing attempts and, and – uh, when it came out, man, he he looked really good. He was starting to look a little more comfortable in the offense now, and so we were we were clicking a little bit. Well, and let's be honest. You talk about his stat line. You know, this is a game that was over at halftime. If he if he's pressing and, and you know y'all are running y'all's normal offense for four quarters, that's a game Thompson would have maybe thrown for four hundred yards. Uh, no doubt. Yeah, he came out. We let him have one series after halftime, and he uh, it was funny. I think he. He threw a deep one to Brock away. I think it was about a 60-yard touchdown, and I think he came over to the sidelines. So we pulled him out after that, and he said, I wish that I had dumped it down short <laughs> because that way I would have gotten some more passing attempts. So he was kind of mad that he took the shot on that one. Uh, but, yeah, no doubt. If we would have left him in that night, uh, he could have thrown for some big numbers. Uh, but it was a good chance to get some of those younger players in the game and get them some experience they hadn't had the last couple of weeks. So, it was good for that. But, no, I thought Ty was efficient. I thought the receivers were good. Uh, again, the O-line was good. So, it was good all around. And defensively, you know, th- that Springtown game, you know, you struggle. But, hey, new quarterback that they rolled out, that happens. But the two other games, your defense has shut out so far. What are your thoughts on how y'all have played defensively so far in 2024? done a good job. I, I was really proud of the kids or not. We really, we focused on explosive plays throughout the week. We said, that's what we kind of got away with, with uh, uh, on, uh, again, Springtown. We, we were characteristically, we don't give up those big plays mm-hmm. like that. And we gave up several against Springtown. So we really talked about that. And then, you know, I like think last week we talked about our sophomores and how, you know, they kind of struggle a little bit. Well, just like in true sophomore fashion, one of those sophomore safeties comes out and he gets a pick on the first play of the game. And so that's why you have them out there is, you know, some of those nights they struggle, but then had a great week with those young kids and they came out and, and man, he had a great pick right off the bat. And so it was good, got us going and had another one of our linebackers had a pick six that night. Um, so then it was just good. We tackled well. We were, our run fits were for good. You know, anytime you can hold an offense to around 60 yards of total offense, uh, it's a good night for the, for the steers. So let me ask you, as your first year as a head coach, you you had the first game of the year you had to win. Second game of the year, you have your first loss. How did you take that loss personally? You know, walk us through that last week for you as as a coach, your first time as a head coach. 
you know, people have asked me that before, and I told them that it's not much different than when I was just a coordinator. You know, mm-hmm. it's just one of those mentalities of get back to work. You know, I don't dwell on anything. You can't dwell on the past. You know, you sit there and fix you. Know, that's the great thing about football is that I love film. I love practice. And so you get back out there and don't dwell on those mistakes. Let's go fix those mistakes. And so it was really refreshing to get back on the practice field again. And, and what I love about our kids here is that they're, they want to fix them as bad as the coaches do. And so they're just, you know, feed us more, feed us more information. What, what do we do wrong? And so, uh, it was frustrating at the time, but when you get back with your team in front of your kids and your coaches, that's when all the healing happens. You get back together and say, let's go fix the problems. All right, this week you take on Decatur. Now, they're one and two, but, man, that, that, that's a that's a sneaky one and two. Their losses are to Brock and then Argyle Liberty Christian, one of the best private school football teams maybe in the nation. When you look at the film, what do you see in Decatur? I see a dang good team. You know, that's their – they've been solid for years. We've had some, again, some great battles with them over the years. And the bad thing is me as being a defensive coach, for whatever reason, they've always kind of had my number a little bit on points. We've, we've, we're probably 50-50 on them on the wins. But I think I always tell our offensive coaches, people love to come to those games because people <laughs> score a lot in those games. They're like 58, 54, 48, 46. And so I, I need to step up my game this week because – we've got to get to keep that number down. They're explosive on offense. They're good on defense. Uh, they've got playmakers all over the field. Um, you know, coach Huff does a great job there with them. He gets the, his athletes, uh, gets the ball in their hands and, uh, you know, a little up tempo team, but yeah, you, you nailed it. Yeah, they're not a one and two team They're You know, I think they were ranked top 10, you know, here a couple of weeks ago, they're still a top 10 team in, in division one. Uh, to make no mistakes about that. You know, you bring up a point that, you know, a lot of people don't talk about, uh, you know, you, you do all the film, you have all the game plan and, and all that. But at the end of the day, it, it, it's a chess match with play calling and stuff. And, and, and I like the fact that you're, you, you say, Hey, look, yeah, they, they, they just somehow always get my number with the, with their offense. It, it, it's kind of fun as fans to see that chess match between the two coordinators. It is, you know, it's, it's one of those things I tell people now, it's, a, it's an offensive game. You get out there and people, they'll walk away from a 7-0 game and say that's the worst football game they've ever seen. Mm-hmm. They'll walk away from a 58-56 and say that was the best game they've ever seen. And I said, so that's all perspective. You know, that 7-0 game was the two really good defenses playing. That 58-56 was good offenses, but may have been bad defenses. But you got to step back and look at – that chess match going on between the two teams. And it, that's the fun part about football is and from game to game, from year to year uh, of, of seeing what those coaching staff do with their team, little tweaks they make. So it, it's fun. That's, that's, as a coaching staff, that's why you like coaching against good programs because it's that little uh, cat and mouse game going back and forth. Well, and, you know, we always talk about when you play a good program, it helps the players, but it helps the coaches as well. That's it. You know, after Springtown, we, we got – so much better after our that Springtown game because they forced us to get better. You know, we tweaked a couple of coverages here and there. We worked on our run fits a little bit, and so that made us better. So that's why you play these tough schedules because it makes you better. And it, it's tough because you, you your record at the end of that that non district schedule may not be exactly what you want, but you're a better football team because of it if you just stay the course. Here at L4 Media, we talk high school football, 4A, 3A, and 2A in Texas. We talk East Texas sports. We talk NFL, guy talk, movie. We also talk wrestling and so much more. And you can see it all on our YouTube channel at L4 Media Company. Like and subscribe. Once again, we want to thank the head coach of Graham, Coach Clay McChristian, for joining us here on the Graham Football Show as they gear up for Decatur this week. After that, Lake Worth, and then before you know it, it's going to be district. I'm getting ready for district. I always get this way about week four of the season, and then you have to kind of, as a guy that covers all 4A, 3A, and 2A, you can hear those shows, by the way, sideline to sideline, at s2sgrantandterry.com or on our YouTube channel, uh, L4 at L4 Media Company, um, but I'm always getting itchy, ready for that, and then you have to deal with the bye weeks, and it's like, come on, let's just get through the next couple weeks. Um, and, and I'm excited. Now, in saying that, I'm excited about this game too. This is a great, 
you know, uh, another learning game. I, I like the schedule and, and how it was put together where you, you kind of have, you know, two tough games to start, a, a Whitesboro team that's, you know, 3A and also down, and then another one in Decatur, and then a 4A team like Lake Worth who is a little down right now, but Todd Peterman will get them going. They're going to be good here and, 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 and quicker than I think people realize. And so I, I, I like how you have these kind of peaks and valley type of schedule. And I think they can really help a team that you're wanting to get better, but you also you, you got to know your team. You don't want to just have them just be grinded down before you get to non-district by playing, you know, five top five teams in every non-district. So I like how the schedule is set up for Graham. And again, another test this week against Decatur. If you have any questions, thoughts, or comments for Coach or for me, just email them to me, Terry at S2Sport.com. Uh, week four in the books. Week five, halfway point. We'll talk about it next week right here on the Graham Football Show on S2S Sports, part of L4 Media.